Temperature stability is a non-negotiable for a thriving saltwater aquarium, yet the piece of equipment holding it all together is a notorious weak spot. Of course, we're talking about your heater. Now, a heater failure can unravel your entire ecosystem that you've spent so much time and money to create. Welcome to The Breaking Point, a series where we explore why aquarium equipment fails and how to prevent it. And today, we're diving into the world of aquarium heaters. We'll discuss why heaters are important, why they fail, and what to do to prevent a failure from damaging your reef. Replacing your aquarium livestock can easily cost you thousands of dollars, and a full recovery from a die-off can be a very long process, and even may mean starting over. So, why do heaters break? First up, thermostat failure. Heaters are just electronic devices that are naturally prone to failure. Many aquarium heaters contain a bimetal thermostat, and these devices contain a strip of two different metals that contract and expand at different rates to turn the heater on or off. In time, the contacts in this thermostat can wear out and even fuse together, causing the heater to fail. Now, if a heater's thermostat fails in the on position, the heater can overheat the aquarium water, while a heater failing in the off position could cause water temperatures to drop below critical levels. I personally have aquariums in the basement of a house that was built in the 1880s. If a heater in my tank stops working, the temperatures will drop very rapidly, especially during the winter. The thermostat can also fall out of calibration over time. Simple dial thermostats like this one on the Eheim heaters can fall out of alignment after extended use. This, however, can easily be overcome, and we'll discuss that later in the video. The second common failure point for heaters is the heating element itself. Heating elements can actually break down over time, especially if the heater is not rated for the tank size or if the heater is overworked. Each time the heater turns on and off or cycles, we are adding stress to the element. In saltwater aquariums, excessive cycling is common because we typically give our heaters a very narrow temperature range to control. Another weak spot for heaters are the seals. Seals and gaskets can break down over time and allow water to leak into the electronics. This type of failure is usually pretty obvious when it occurs, especially with glass heaters, but typically results in the heater completely failing. Now, lastly, heaters can fail from misuse or misplacement. Heaters must be used in the water to work. Heaters are not properly submerged, can be damaged from overheating. So pay attention to minimum submergence lines like this one on your heaters and make sure they are placed in a spot where they are not at risk of exposure. So the real question, how do we prevent a catastrophe? Now, adding redundancy can be as simple as having multiple heaters. Having a backup heater in the aquarium could prevent temperature drops in the event that a heater fails or just isn't keeping up. Just remember to set the second heater to a lower temperature than the primary heater so that it isn't working constantly and it should only fire up when the primary heater fails. When your heater does fail, having a redundant thermostat can also save your tank. A great option for that is something like the Inkbird heater controller. Now these controllers are a reliable, cost-effective way to control your heaters and will run you somewhere between $50 to $60. Using a controller like the Inkbird can provide a backup if your heater fails in the on position. It will actually cut the power to the heater when its own separate temperature probe reaches the desired temp. Some models are even, even Wi-Fi enabled and will send notifications to your mobile device if the aquarium temperature falls outside of the target range or if the temperature between the two temperature probes varies by more than five degrees. While not as cost effective as the Inkbird, the use of an aquarium controller like the Apex system from Neptune is a highly effective way to manage temperature control as well as many other parameters. The Apex will constantly monitor aquarium temperature and turn your heater on or off as needed through the Neptune energy bar. Now, if you're like me, you might employ multiple redundancies. A nearly fail-safe approach is the use of an Inkbird controller plugged into your Apex controller. This gives you at least two additional levels of control over your aquarium temperature management system. In this case, if the heater fails, the Inkbird will take over. If the Inkbird fails, the Apex will take over. And while it may seem like overkill, anyone that has lost a reef, including myself, to a heater failure knows how devastating it can be. Be sure to check out the Bulk Reef Supply website for our full selection of heaters and controllers and all your other aquarium needs. And happy reefing, everyone.